This is not a a fish or a well story. You think of the book of Jonah, the first thing that comes to your mind, it's a well story. It's not a story about Jonah either. Jonah's the name of the book, the book of Jonah, and he wrote it, but it's not about Jonah either. And it's not about the city of Nineveh where he's supposed to be going, where he should have gone. This is about the greatest revival in the history of man. I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, but Nineveh had about 600,000 people, probably more, but it had at least 600,000 people. And at the end of the story, we're going to see that this, this many people, the whole city of Nineveh, accepted the Lord. Over 600,000 people. So this is, this, is a, this is a story of the greatest revival ever we ever had. And it's also about a loving, gracious Father that we have. He's, you're going to see His mercy and His grace that He gives to us through this book. He had every right to destroy a prophet, which was Jonah who disobeyed him, but he didn't destroy him. He could have, but he didn't. This was a prophet. This was a preacher man. And uh, he was disobeying the Lord. Instead, he went after Jonah and made it easier for him to obey him than to run. Because Jonah's going to be running from the Lord in this book. And the Lord's going to make it to where it's easier to obey God than to run from him. And we probably already know that in our own lives. We should have already known that. So this story is going to show us we've been like Jonah. We have run from the Lord. I have, and I'm sure everyone else has. Sometime or another, for whatever reason might be, we've run from the Lord. And when I say we've run from the Lord, we hear his commands in the Bible. We, heard, we hear what he has to say to us, but we don't want to do it. So we go the other way. That's running from the Lord. And it's about a story of a God, of a Father who gives second chances. Amen? Amen. We're going to see that this man of God starts off, he wrote this book. Jonah wrote this book and he, he, starts, he starts off showing how he was disobedient to the Lord. If we were to write a book of our Christian walk with the Lord, if God said, I want you to write a book about your walk with me, would we put in there all of our disobedience? We probably wouldn't. Oh, I followed you on this, and I followed you on this, I obeyed you on this. But the stuff we didn't obey him on, we probably would leave out. But Jonah didn't. But Jonah, like I said, Jonah wrote, wrote the book. And he starts off showing, I was disobedient to God. Now, Nineveh is, a, is in Syria. And there, Syria is well known for torturing people. There was, there was a mini, it was a mean nation. And they were known for torturing people very badly. Jonah didn't like the Syrians. And it's asking, it's, that, it's like asking us, it's like the Lord asking us, uh, go to Iraq. I want you to witness to them. And we know Iraq, hate, they hate Americans. But he says, I want you to go over there and witness to them. Would we have a hard time with that? I would. They've killed many Americans. Now, I've said it before, I'm going to say it one more time. I am not proud of being an American. I am proud, I live in a country where I can teach the Bible, praise the Lord, and not get killed for it. But I'm not proud of a country that kills babies. I'm not proud of a country where homosexuality is legal and it's okay. Well, I could, I could keep going on and on. The only time America recognizes God is in a crisis. Now, that's me. Okay, I don't. Uh, I don't pledge my allegiance to the flag. I am not loyal to this country. There's only one I give all my loyalty to, and there's only one I pledge myself to, and that is God. Now, one day, I don't think it's now, but one day, if someone hears this, they could come and get me. But it won't change. Because I mean what I say. My loyalty and I pledge my allegiance to one. And that's God. But like I did say. I'm glad I'm in America. Because I still have the freedom to preach Jesus. It's like Moses putting the people before the Lord in, in Exodus 32. 
Now you're just going to have to write these verses down. I don't have many, but in Exodus chapter 32, verses 31 and 32, this is Moses. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Now this is Moses talking to the Lord. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, plot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Now Moses was putting the people before God. Right here, he's doing it. He's saying, if you don't forgive these people, then plot me out of the name of your book. And that's the book of life. Because everybody's name is, put, is in the book of life. I've taught on this before. I'm not going to really get into it. But everybody's name is in the book of life. And when you reject Jesus for the final time, he plots your name out of the book. Well, I'm just showing right here. Moses is saying, hey, if you're not going to forgive him, then take my name out of your book. Now, who's he putting first? He's putting the people first. This is what we shouldn't do. We should all know that God comes first no matter who. It comes before your daddy, your mama. Your uncle, your aunt, your grandma, your kids. God says, if you don't, if you don't put me before, any, before them, and he's talking about family. He's not talking about friends here. He's talking about family. Then you're not his. That's what he says. So we need to have God as number one. So we're going to start with verse one. It says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Ammonite, saying, arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, like I've always said before, you hear from the Lord first before you do anything. Many people think faith, you do things and see if the Lord's there. No, faith is when the Lord speaks to you. Then you have faith that he'll be there to help you do whatever he tells you to do. But faith is... Is hearing from the Lord. And, and Jonah right here is hearing from the Lord because the Lord's telling him, telling him to go to Nineveh. You better make sure that the Lord, right here, said the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord. God told him to do this. You better make sure he's the one that's telling you to go on a mission. And it's not some pastor or leaders of the church, youth leader or whatever, or it's just something that you want to do. Now, if you're going because your pastor wants you to go, or some leader in the church wants you to go, or if you're going just because that's what you want to do, you're going against the Lord. Let me put it that way. Because if he doesn't call you to go, then you're going on your own. And guess what? If you go on your own, whatever happens, you can't blame the Lord. If he doesn't want you to go, you don't have to. If, if he wants you to go, guess what? Nobody has to raise money for you to go. I see a lot of people in the church they have fundraisers and they raise money for whoever's going on a mission trip, going, going somewhere on the missions. Well, if this person was called by God, then they wouldn't have to beg for money and they wouldn't have to have no fundraiser for this person to go. God will supply what they need to go on this mission trip. God would. He's done it through the Bible. He still does it today. But Jonah used it for different reasons because Jonah had the money. We're going to see that Jonah had the money to go. To Nineveh. But we're going to see he used that money for something else. But re just remember, if God calls you, you don't have to ask for money. He will supply everything you need to make this, this trip. We have too many people going on missions that weren't called by God to go. And then things happen over there. Sometimes they're bad. We've had, people, we've had missionaries get killed. Well, I, you know, I have to question, was that from the Lord? Because believe it or not, he didn't say America had to go to the world and put out the word. He can just say India. He can have, he can have people in India to reach people in India. It's not like, well, if we don't go, they're not going to hear it. But that's, that's not true. Because God, he can, use, he can use whatever he needs to use to witness to someone. He's done it before. Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 9, it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generations of vipers. Now this is religious leaders. He calls them vipers. Religious leaders, Jesus is calling them vipers. Who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. 
And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. The religious leaders thought that God needed them to spread his words, that God needed them. Well, right here, God is saying, I can make these stones to rise up as my children. So that's what I'm saying. If we think, hey, if we don't go, they're not going to hear it. False. God could take the stones in India to talk to those people. God is God. We, sometimes we forget who our God is and what he can do. He can do anything he wants. And right, If he says he can make these stones to rise up as children of Abraham, then he can do it. Because there's no words in here, there's, there's not one sentence in this Bible that is a lie or a mistake. If God wants these people to hear about salvation, it's going to happen. Whether we go or not, it's going to happen. All right? Remember that. This seems to be, this seems like a pretty simple command from the Lord to Jonah. You know, go witness to these people. Doesn't it? Sound pretty simple, right? No, Joe, I want you to go witness to the people of Nineveh. We can understand Jonah. If you think about it, we can understand Jonah because what's the Lord told, what has the Lord given us to do? He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry to go and witness to the lost people. Are we doing it? We're not, it I'm not going to say nobody's doing it because some people are getting saved. But as a whole, we as Christians, we as God's children, we're not doing a very good job of it. Because if we were, we'd have more baptisms in the church. We'd have more people getting saved. But we can't say, we can't say too much about Jonah because we really don't do it in our own lives. God told him to go and witness. Well, he's told us to go and witness. Are we like Jonah? Yes, many times we are. We're just like Jonah. He didn't go, and a lot of times we don't go. The Lord is ready to bring judgment on them. And it sounds like a pretty easy task to do. To do, go preach to them, repent, or judgment is coming on you. It sounds, well, you know, people don't want to hear that. What is the truth? It's the truth, right? I mean, especially our friends and family. We don't want, them to, we don't want to see them go to hell, do we? I mean, if we have the truth in us, do we want to see them go to hell? Because we know... That's where they're going unless they hear the truth of God. And if we, got what it, if we have what it takes to save them from hell, then why aren't we giving it to them? You understand? Why aren't we giving it to them? We have exactly what they need, and we're keeping it to ourselves. Think about it. Verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now Jonah was a preacher, a Christian. He went the other way from what the Lord said to do. If he said, go west, Jonah went east. When the Lord wants to use you and you do it, amen. And guess what? He's going to bless you for doing it. It's good to obey God. You will receive blessings. And if he doesn't bless you here, then you'll have rewards in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Do what God wants and you'll have rewards in heaven. You'll get blessings either here or there. But Jonah went the other way. And the rest of the verse says, and, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof. Notice here that he had the money. Just like I said a while ago, he had the money to go to Nineveh. God supplied him what he needed to go to Nineveh. But instead, he used that money to run from the Lord because he paid his fare to go onto this, this ship, this boat. And the reason I say that is because prosperity preachers preach that if you have money, it's because you're obedient to God. But then they say if you don't have money, it's because you're not being obedient to the Lord. Well, Jonah right here wasn't being obedient, was he? But he had the money. Prosperity preaching is, is not of God. These preachers, I'm not going to say they're not born again, but I will say these messages they give like this is not from the Lord. Prosperity does not mean you're walking with the Lord. And it doesn't mean that if you're poor, you're not walking with the Lord. It's wrong for them to preach that way. And the rest of the verse, And went down into it to go to with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. 
being a Christian man, I'm sure he knew that God is everywhere. And you can't hide from him. Right here it says he went down into the, to go with them onto Tarshish from the presence. He wanted to hide from the presence of the Lord. But Jonah knew better than that. He was, he's a prophet. He knows he can't do that. By the way, for those of you who believe you can lose your salvation like the Pentecostals do, here's a prophet who is willingly disobeying God. Disobeying. But it doesn't show anywhere in this book that he has lost his salvation by disobeying God. It doesn't say, there, it doesn't say that anywhere in here. And this is a pretty bad sin he's doing. Worse than what King David did. King David had committed adultery and had the husband killed. Had one man killed. Jonah, because of what he's doing, is taking a chance of over 600,000 men being killed for not hearing the word of God. So I don't see nowhere in this book where Jonah has lost his salvation for sinning. Like some, preach, so like some preachers preach. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. The Lord didn't want to let Jonah off the hook, so he brought this storm in the sea, and the ship almost sank. Now when we disobey the Lord, like on witnessing, can it affect other people? And right here, Jonah's sin is affecting these sailors these marine guys on the ship. It's a he's, he's put their lives in jeopardy for him disobeying the Lord. Now, when we disobey the Lord, do other, can other people get hurt by it? Yes, they can. You better be very aware of that. Verse 5, Then the mariners were afraid and cried very, every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the ship, in, into the sides of the ship, and he laid and was fast asleep. This was a bad storm. Now these are these are sailors. These they're used to bad storms. But right here it says they were so afraid. They were exceedingly afraid. So there was a pretty bad storm the Lord put there. And they prayed to their gods. Their gods. Small little G, they prayed to their gods. Now this wasn't a passenger ship. And Jonah paid to go on the ship. He said, hey, I'll give you this much money. You take me with you. Because it's a cargo ship because they're throwing things, cargo over, overboard. So it's a cargo ship. And Jonah went down into the ship as to hide and was sleeping. And like I said before, you can't hide from the Lord. And plus, you get pretty tired when you're running from the Lord. Spiritually, you can get pretty tired from running from the Lord. And verse 6 so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. They found him and said, they said to Jonah, We have called on our gods, but it's not working. So we need you to call upon your God to save us. That's what they're saying right here in verse 6. And in verse 7, And they said everyone to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and it fell, and the lots fell upon Jonah. Now this, this verse shows me that Jonah didn't pray to the Lord. They came, they came and asked him to pray to his God. It doesn't show anywhere right here where, lot, where uh, Jonah prayed. It's kind of hard to pray to God when you're running from him. When you're not in his will, it's kind of hard to pray to him, right? I mean, you, you know when you're out of the will of God. So when we're out of the will of God, it's kind of hard to pray him and ask him for things. When you know you've been disobedient with him. So now they're going to cast lots. Cast, casting lots was done in the flesh. When you're making God answer you right now on something, in here and in other places in the Old Testament, they would cast lots. Believing that that would determine what God wants them to do. To influence them on how on what outcome they want it. It's kind of using like the eight ball. Let me, let me shake this eight ball. Ask it a question and shake the eight ball and see what it comes up. That's about what it's like. Okay, casting the lots. But now we have. But now we have the Holy Spirit. We don't have to do some idiot stuff like that. 
we need answers, we, we go to the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit to tell us whatever the situation may be. We got the Holy Spirit to go to. We don't have to shake a, an eight ball or anything like that or go to some Ouija board, not only for bad things, but go to yes or go to no, which way is the, the stone going to take you. We, that's, that's wicked, in fact. But anyway, the lots fell on Jonah. So they threw lots and it fell on Jonah, that he was the reason why this storm was on him. And in verse 8, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? For what is thy occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. And when he said, I'm a Hebrew, they knew that this man was under God, Jehovah. They had their gods, but everybody knew that the Jews had Jehovah God as their God. Not just any God, but the people knew about Jehovah God. But he didn't say, I'm a preacher. He said, I'm a Hebrew. When you're, again, when you're not walking with the Lord, are you going to go up to somebody and say, hey, I'm a Christian? When you're not walking with them, are we going to do that? I don't think so. If you're out there getting drunk, oh, I'm a Christian. Mm. And Jonah, that's what he did right there. Right here, he didn't say, I'm a preacher. He didn't say, I'm a prophet. He just said, I'm a Hebrew. Because he wasn't walking with the Lord. We need to learn from that. We have Christians today who say they're Christians, but then they're out there acting just like the lost people. And what are they doing? Putting a bad name on Christianity. If you're not going to be a Christian, then don't say you're a Christian. Amen? Because you're not fooling the Lord. He knows. So why do you want to fool a bunch of lost people? They can't do anything to you. Verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. In verse 5, they were afraid. But now they're exceedingly afraid. They're very afraid now. They now know what God brought this storm. Jehovah God. And what he can do. They know about God. And how you can't run from him also. They knew this. Then they said, why are you running from your God? They knew he was running because what it says in verse 9. I fear the Lord. But he doesn't tell them why. He doesn't tell them why he's running. Even though, even though these are lost men. These are lost men, okay? They're lost men and they're like. Even we know that you don't run from God. We should know as Christians, but even right here, even these lost men, hey, we know you can't run from God. They knew that. In verse 11, Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wroth and was temperate. They found Jonah guilty. And they asked him, What should we do with you to calm this storm? And in verse 12, And he said, Jonah said unto them, Take me up. And cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Now right here we're going to see where Jonah is a type of Jesus. And I'm going to show you that. He's willing to die for these men. He knows if these men throw him over that they would be saved. So like it says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 39 through 41, it says, but he answered and said unto them, This is Jesus, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. That's what he's telling. The only sign I'm going to give you is about, is about Jonah. Verse 41, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Now you know there's other way of dying without physical death and that's when you are ready to give up self. To tell friends and family, like I said, to give up being popular to witness to people. Jonah here, like I said, is the type of Christ. He was supposed to go and tell Nineveh. They were supposed to give him the plan of salvation. What I'm showing right here 
is Jonah is a type of Christ right here starting with verse 12 and we'll see more on it as we go further down verse 13 nevertheless the men rode hard to bring it to land they rode the sh they rode harder to bring the ship to land but they could not for the sea was rough and was temperous against them Jonah told them what to do to get saved physically did they listen they wanted to do it their way and they failed because the more they rode, the harder the winds got. Reminds of reminds of, of of us. Does it remind you of you? The Lord tells you, okay, this is this is what you need to do to to finish or start or whatever, to complete whatever. And you're like, eh, I got a better way. Guess what? We're gonna fail all the time when we do it our way instead of God's way. It's, we're gonna fail all the time, just like these men. Instead of throwing Jonah, Jonah overboard, like he said, they started rolling harder, trying to do it their way. But they didn't succeed at it. Now, these are good men. These are good men. They didn't want to throw Jonah overboard. That'd be like killing them, and they didn't want to do it. These are good men. But just like I've always said before, goodness does not get you to heaven. These men were lost because they were good, and they didn't want to kill Jonah. That doesn't mean, oh, they were good people. Well, surely they went to heaven. No. What did I say before? God looks at our righteousness as being as filthy rags. That's how God looks at our righteousness, as filthy rags. So being good doesn't get you there. Titus 3.5 says the same thing. Your goodness is not going to make it to heaven. It's putting Jesus Christ in your heart. That's what makes you makes it to heaven. Now verse 14 Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. After trying it their way, they gave up, and they called upon the Lord, and they begged the Lord that they shouldn't die because of this man's sin, and not to hold them responsible for his death. This storm was sent by you, God, for him. This, they knew that this storm was sent by God for Jonah. In verse 15, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. They, didn't, they did it God's way then, like he told them. And they were saved, physically saved. Not only from the physical death, but we're going to see spiritually they also got saved. By 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 listening to the Lord. Notice that after they did it God's way, the storm was gone. Did y'all hear what I just said? After they did it God's way, what happened? The storm went away. You got storms in your life? Huh? If you got storms in your life, maybe they're there. Maybe they're there because you're not listening. And once you start listening, what's going to happen? That storm's going to go away. Just like here. As soon as they did what God told them to do by throwing Jonah overboard, as soon as they obeyed God, the storm went away. Amen? I mean, that's an amen. All we got to do is listen to God and whatever storm is in your life will go away. This is the word of God. This is, this is exciting words right here if we're listening. Verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. The word, the word fear here means respect. They knew about, they knew about blood sacrifice. Like I said, everybody knew about God's, Israel's God. So they knew about blood sacrifices. They knew about forgiveness. And one of the vows they made, I'm sure, I'm sure it was, that they wouldn't pray to their God anymore. For one thing, they saw their God couldn't do anything. So I'm sure one of their vows was they were going to let their God go and now Jehovah God was going to be their God. Now, sometimes in today's life we have to give up our religion. They give up their gods to follow God, the true God, Jehovah God. They give up their, their gods. Sometimes in our lives today we have to give up our religion. If we're in a religion that's not obeying the words of God, sometimes we have to give up our religion to follow the true God. Just like these men here. 
they did the same thing. They gave up their gods to follow the true God. It's the same thing. There's a lot of people out there who are in religions, and I'm not going to mention these religions, but you'll know who they are. We got to give up the religion if we want to walk with the Lord. Because there's religions out there, they do not follow the Word of God. They follow their own traditions, the traditions of men. We see that in Romans 8, 28. It says that all things work together for good. Jonah was disobeying God. Even though he was disobeying God, did good come out of this? Mm -hmm. Men got saved. So in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. So somehow, some way, God can take your disobedience and make it for good. Now, he did it right here. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that we should go out there and act like idiots and disobey the Lord. Because, hey, if I act stupid like this, God's going to take it and maybe people will get saved. But guess what? You're thinking like an idiot. And I, that's a nice word that I know to use. Okay? So I don't, want, I don't want to say this and you go out there thinking, whoa, hey, I can be bad and God's going to make it good for other people. I'm serious. I'm serious. There are people who might think that. We also see in verse 5 that they threw the cargo off the ship. So I would think that they couldn't continue to where they were going because they didn't have no cargo. So this is what I believe. I believe those, that ship turned around, went back to Joppa. And when they got to Joppa, I bet you anything, they told the people what happened. They were witnessing. Look what God did. Just like in our own lives, like in my life, I'm going to use my me as an example. When I got born again, I couldn't help but telling everybody. I told my family first, and then I told all my friends. I was excited about what happened to me, how God opened my eyes. Now, this is another, I really truly believe that these men did the same thing. They went back to Joppa and said, and told them the whole story. And that's the way we should be. Always ready to, to glorify the Lord for what he's done in our lives. In verse 17, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Now they have some religions that would say, Well, he quit walking with the Lord, so the Lord should have killed him. Because he lost his salvation. Now you have religions that believe that. You disobey to God, you should lose your salvation. And they say, that's what he deserves. He walked away from the Lord, he disobeyed God, so he should lose his salvation. And again, we're going to see that's not true. Scientists decided to call whales mammals. Just like they're trying to call man men. They say we came from animals. Men came from animals. That's what they're trying. Scientists are trying to say that. And now they're saying fish are like are mammals. I'm not an animal. I didn't come from an animal. Because my Bible, my Lord says in Genesis 126, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. I don't think God's an animal, do you? So I don't think I I don't think I came from animal. God made me in his image. Amen? So God called, God called it a fish. Jesus called it a well in Matthew 12, 40. He calls it a well that we just read. And we know that God and Jesus are what? The same. So if he calls it a well over here, a fish over here, well, then it's got two names. It's a well and a fish. It's the same thing. They're the same. But scientists want to say, no, whale is a mammal. No, God said a whale is a fish. Amen? Scientists need to read this book instead of going on what they think. And believe it or not, we have people who believe them. Well, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they'd like to do anything. What they would like is to prove themselves smarter than the Bible. Now, there's two kinds of fish that can swallow a man whole. It's a sperm whale. It's known that a sperm whale could swallow a man whole. It hasn't been, it hasn't been shown that a sperm whale has swallowed a man, but they have caught a, whale, a sperm whale, cut it open, and it had a 16-foot shark in there. Now, I don't think Jonah was 16 foot. So if it can swallow a, a, a shark that big, it can swallow a man. 
So it is true. A whale can swallow a man. And it has also been proven on a great white shark. It's been proven on that also that, they, that a, a great white shark can swallow a man. Now, I'm not going to give you all the things on that, but I do have the information if you doubt what I'm saying. I do have the information to show you where it can happen, where it has happened. Even if it, even if it wasn't proven by these, by these uh, stories that you read about sharks and stuff swallowing, even if, it did, even if I didn't have all that, guess what? If God said it, I believe it. Amen? If God says it, I'm going to believe it. It's the Word of God. Now this, this was a divine appointment by God. Do you think that fish just so happened to be right there when they threw Jonah overboard? It just so happened? No. God put that fish there. We're going to see... What we thought was death was salvation. We think giving up our life is like dying. But Jesus says it's a life. Mark 8.35 Mark 8.35 For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If you want to save your own life, you're going to lose it. And then it says, But whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. So if you want to save your life, you have to lose it. That's what God's saying. You lose, you give up what you want to do and start living the way God wants you to live. Die to self and put the Lord there. That's what he's saying right there. Amen. That's what we're going to do. If you want to save your life, because I can show you in the scriptures, until you make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I can show it through the scriptures that he says we're dead. That's why he says, I'm the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We don't have no life until we accept Jesus Christ. We're walking zombies until we accept Jesus Christ. Then he gives us life. 